somebody come read Bhagavad Gita. You will read? Come on. Our publication by Macmillan Company, Bhagavad Gita is out. Introduction. This is an introduction to Bhagavad Gita as it is. Namo Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Pastaya, Uttale, Srimati Bhakti Vedanta, Samaritya Nayana. The Bhagavad Gita is also known as the Gita Upanishad. It is the essence of the Vedic knowledge and one of the most important Upanishads in Vedic literature. There are many commentaries on the Bhagavad Gita and the necessity for another should be explained in the following basis. An American lady asked me to recommend an English edition of the Bhagavad Gita, which she could read. I was unable to do so in good conscience. Of course, there are many translations, but of those I have seen, not only in America, but those also in India, none can be said to be authoritative, because in almost every one of them, the author has expressed his personal opinion through the commentaries without touching the spirit of the Bhagavad Gita as it is. The spirit of the Bhagavad Gita is mentioned in the Gita itself. It is like this. If we want to take a particular medicine, then we have to follow the directions written on the label of the bottle. We cannot take the medicine according to our own directions or the directions of a friend not in knowledge of this medicine. We must follow the directions on the label or the directions of our physician. The Bhagavad Gita also should be accepted as it is directly by the speaker himself. The speaker is Lord Sri Krishna. He is mentioned on every page as the Supreme Personality of Godhead or Bhagavan. Bhagavan sometimes means any powerful person or demigod, but here it means Krishna. Hmm. Uh, most of you uh, must have read some editions of Bhagavad Gita. I'll give you instances. One of the English translations commentaries by Dr. Radha Krishna. And the ninth chapter. Uh, the Lord says, Manmana bhavamad bhaktam madhyaji maang namaskuru maabhi vaishyasi kontya asangsa. The Lord says that you, you just always remain uh, thinking of me. That means always remain in Krishna consciousness. Simply, this Krishna consciousness means somewhere or other you have to think of Krishna only. Somewhere or other. You just engage yourself in some activity so that it can remind you about Krishna. That is the problem. Therefore, uh, those who are uh, elevated devotees, they, in everything they remember Krishna. That is the purpose. Power jangam dakhi na dakhi Here is a light. A perfect devotee sees the light, not the la- light as it is, but he sees some relationship with Krishna, or Krishna in, in, in the light. This is stated in the Bhagavad Gita also, that prabhasmi sasisurja rasoham apsukauntiya prabhasmi sasisurja Krishna says that uh, I am the taste of the water. Now the when you are thirsty, you want water. 
you feel some nice taste in the water by which your thirst is satisfied. Yes, now I am satisfied. The Krishna says, I am that taste. Similarly, he says, Prabhasmi Satsusurya, the light in the sun, in the moon. I am that light. In this way, he has described. So, when one is uh, highly elevated in Krishna consciousness, in everything, in every action, and uh, every phenomenon, he will see only Krishna. That is the perfection of Krishna consciousness. So that is being taught in the ninth chapter and in this verse, manmana bhava madbhakta, always think of. This is the sum and substance of all spiritual advancement. What is that? Smartabham satatu vishnu. One should always be absorbed in the thought of Vishnu, the Supreme Personality of God. That is called samādhi. That is perfection of yoga. The yoga system is the practice of the most lower class of men. I mean to say spiritually, not material. Because their mind is so much distracted from here and there, they have to concentrate the mind by practice and focus the mind and Vishnu. That is the yoga perfection, real. Now they are manufacturing so many other things. But the real yoga practice is this, that you have to uh, and draw your attention from everything and focus the same and Vishnu power. That is yoga. Dhyanavastita manasa pashyanti jami yogina. This is the definition of yogi. They are in meditation. Dhyanavastita. Ah, Dhyanavastita means meditation. So those who are yogis, you have heard so much about meditation. Ah, that is a very popular word in your country. And what is that meditation? The meditation is uh, to focus the mind on the form of Vishnu. Dhyana vasthita manasa pashyantijam yogina. So this instruction you'll find in the ninth chapter. Manmana Bhavamad Bhakta, always think of me. That is the perfection of life, always thinking of Vishnu. <clears throat> but one commentator, very big commentator, he says, this meditation is not up to Krishna. Just see. Krishna says that meditate upon me in the Bhagavad Gita. And the commentator says, oh, it is not up to Krishna. In this way, as in similar way or a different way, every commentary on Bhagavad Gita so far published, I have seen, uh, their business is how to divert one's attention from Krishna. Although in the Bhagavad Gita, the uh, main factor is Krishna. Well, that is mentioned here. What is that? This Bhagavad Gita has come. Yes. Mm-hmm. The last sentence was Bhagavan sometimes mean any any means any powerful person or demigod, but here it means Krishna. This is confirmed by all of the Now this uh, Bhagavan. You have heard many times I've explained 
Bhaga. Bhaga means opulent. There are six kinds of opulence. What is that? Wealth. Uh, then influence, strength, uh, uh, reputation, and knowledge, beauty, and renunciation. Is it not six? Uh, if a man is wealthy, very rich, just like in your country, Rockefeller, poor, there are many rich men in your, your country, is very rich. So, if one is very rich, he is called opulent. If a man is very reputed, famous man, ah, he is also opulent. Ah, if a man is very influential, he is also opulent. His man, a man is very strong. Now the strong man, formerly strong man had request, uh, respect. All the kings, they were respected on their personal strength. They used to, they had to fight with the opponents. So that is also opponents. Then beauty, uh, a very beautiful man or woman. That is also opulence. And uh, wise, very learned wise man, that is also opulence. Scientist, philosopher, mathematician. Uh, so they are also opulent. And renouncer. A renouncer, that one who gives up everything. He has everything in his position, but he disposes himself. That is called renunciation. Just like a king, Maharaj Bharat, under whose name India is called Bharat Varsha, he was the emperor of the world. But at the age of twenty-four years only, he gave up everything. His young wife, young children. Lord Buddha, Lord Buddha was prince. But very young boy, at the age of Twenty years or something like that. He gave up everything, his father, kingdom. This is called renunciation. At the present moment, <laughs> hardly there is any instance of renunciation. But formerly, there were many kings, many princes who renounced everything for spiritual and moral. So, these six principles are called bhogo. So, these six principles are there, just like we are minute part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, fragment, very small fragment. Oh. So, every one of us have got some money according to our capacity. Every one of us uh, has got some strength, or some reputation, or some beauty, or some knowledge. Comparatively, it may be that your position may be greater than me, and others' position may be greater than you. The, not all of us are on the same level, their comparative position. So, Bhagavan means you go on searching, when you find a person that nobody is richer than him, nobody is stronger than him, nobody is reputed than him, nobody is wiser than him, nobody is beautiful, ah, ah, more beautiful than him, and nobody is renouncer than him. He is Bhagavan. He is God. So all these you'll find in Krishna. That is the significance of Krishna. When Krishna was present on this material world, so nobody could excel him in any of these opulences. Nobody. So far richness is concerned, 
he exhibited his richness uh, with his dream now. He married 16,108 wives. And each wife had a palace. And the palace did not require light. It was bedecked with valuable jewels. So at night, the light from the jewels will illuminate the rooms. Can you imagine such house? <laughs> and not only that, that he married 16,000 wives and he was apart from them. No. With each wife he was present. Ah. It's with some wife he's talking, with some wife he's playing, with some wife he's uh, looking after the children. In this way, Narod traveled all the houses, all the palaces. He saw Krishna is there in great. This is called opulence. And so far, power is concerned. There are so many fights with Krishna, nobody could conquer. So far, beauty is concerned. You know Krishna's beauty, even from the picture. And the, all the gopis and Vrindavan, Krishna at the age of 15th, 16th year, naturally at that time, boys are very beautiful. Any, any man even. So you are so beautiful that the, all the gopis prayed to uh, Maya. Everyone prayed, uh, my dear mother, please give me Krishna as my husband. Uh, so, this is very nice significance, you see, that the day they prayed, the next day there was, perhaps you know, the Krishna's Vastrahan Lila. Vastrahan Lila means, in India still there are places in Punjab when girls and women take bath, they uh, keep their clothing in the river, I mean to say, not in the bathroom. In the rivers, they keep their clothing on the shore, on the bank, and they dip into the water completely naked. So that place is completely separate for the woman. No man can go there. That is the system, it's still somewhere. Uh. <clears throat> and they will take bath fully and they will come and they can dress. Uh. And no man, no man, they are all naked, there is no same. There no man or no boy can go there. This Bastrahan Lila was that uh, Krishna and Still Lily went there and took up all their clothes and got up on a tree <laughs> with the clothes. Uh, and they cannot come out of the water. Krishna, you were very naughty. Give us our clothes, give us our clothes. That was Vastrahan Lila. The purpose was the, the people interpreted in a different way. But the purpose is very significant. Only devotees can understand that all these girls, day before, uh, they prayed to Yogamaya, that everyone prayed that uh, let us have Krishna as our husband. Now, Krishna was at that time only 15, 16 years old. Uh, in India still, the boys of 15, 16 years, they are not married. At least he must be 20, 22 years. And girls are married between 12 to 16 years. That is the Vedic system. Neither it was possible for Krishna to marry all the girls. But they all prayed. They have to fulfill their desire. That was Bhattarhan. The Vastrahan Lila means that according to any human civilization, 
सिस्टर स्टैम ए ओमैन कैन बिकम नेकेड ओनली बिफोर हजबेंड So Krishna fulfilled that that you are naked. I am before you, so I am your husband. That's wholesale acceptance. That was the purpose. But the nonsense people they differently interpret. So Krishna's opulence, beauty, strength, and so far wisdom. At least you can test. Now the wisdom, the preliminary wisdom only, preliminary talks on spiritual matter is discussed in this Bhagavad Gita, and this book is still read uh, even up to five thousand years all over the world. Just see his wisdom. That is a test. Big scholars, big religionists, philosophers. They are bewildered. It's still about Bhagavad Gita. Therefore, there are so many interpretation. Ah, but this what is this Bhagavad Gita? Bhagavad Gita is the A B C D of spiritual knowledge. It is not very high depth of spiritual knowledge. High depth of spiritual knowledge is in the Srimad Bhagavad. And this is only entrance, just like children are taught A B C D, or first book of knowledge. It is only the first book of knowledge. Ah. And what is that first book of knowledge? Ah. The first book of knowledge teaches from the very beginning that you are not this body. That is the beginning of knowledge, spiritual knowledge. And the whole world, great philosophers, the great politicians, ah, now uh, yesterday the boys gave me one paper. There is discussion about transcendental meditation. There was publication of our act, uh, act, activities also and some other. So the. So called transcendental means they are discussing on the mind, and the Bhagavad Gita, mind is immediately rejected as matter. So, transcendental meditation they are on the platform of the mind. Just see, and the Bhagavad Gita says that. Mind is external, nature only. Indriyani pararahu indribha paramana manasastu parobuddhi buddhestu ja parasha. Now, in the gross material concept of life, we are under the impression that I am this body. Therefore, we are concerned with the senses. If our senses are gratified, we think we are now satisfied. Uh-huh. So this is the uh, gross type of existence. When is the existence of ignorance, illusion, maya? When one is uh, under the thought that I am this, this is illusion. Illusion means. You accept something; something is presented as reality, and you accept it. Just like the example is given: uh, water in the desert, mirage. There is no water, but a, an animal is uh, hankering, is running after water in the desert. Uh, that is practical. Uh, uh, due, due to sun sign, there is a reflection. It appears in the desert. Sometimes you might have seen. Not here in India, we have seen several times. Uh, there is exactly there is vast water, and it is reflecting uh, the reflection. That is called mirage. There is not a drop of water, but 
the animal, when he is thirsty, he th- it thinks that there is water. He jumps into the desert, and the water is going ahead, going ahead, and he is running after it, and then dies. So this illusion that I am this body. So we are after this sense gratification. Body means the senses. So that is my age, illusion. Just like the animal is running after water in the desert. So even this yoga system, the hatha yoga system, that is also based on this illusion. They are trying to oh, put this water under certain exercise and thinking that they are elevating themselves in spirit. But Bhagavad Gita in the beginning says that you are not this body, neither this mind. This is the beginning of Bhagavad, and that is ABCD. Any person who does not know that I am not this body, he has no even ABCD knowledge of spiritual kingdom. If one is attracted with this bodily function or mental function, he is outside the spiritual purview altogether, rejected immediately. That test is in Bhagavad Gita. So these people, the so-called yogis, so-called karmis, karmis means the ordinary worker, those who are running in the street with motor car, this way and that way, very busy. You see? What are they? The karmis. Karmis means under the bodily concept. They are thinking. But that comfort of this body and sense gratification is the end of life. That is karmi. If they have got very nice apartment, a nice wife, and good bank balance, and a very nice dress. Oh, there is perfection. That's all. That is karmi. And jnani means when they are confused, just like there are section of people in your country, they have seen enough of this material happiness, or they are searching after something. And wrongly, But actually, those who are intelligent, they don't remain confused. Actually, they want to see uh, what is my actual position. They are called Gani, man of knowledge. So Gana or knowledge is on the mental plane and karma is on the bodily plane. So, oh, Somebody, some section of people, they are engaged in this bodily platform, and some section of people are engaged in the mental platform. Whatever religion and process of elevation of life we have manufactured, they can be grouped in two ways, mental and bodily. That's all. And Bhagavad Gita is transcendent. Neither on the mental plane nor on the bodily plane. Uh, therefore, the last instruction of Bhagavad Gita is Sarvadhanma and Parittaj. Dharma, you have created so many religious principles, so many concocted spiritual ways of life. Or material ways of life. Somebody are material is somebody or so called spiritual. So Krishna says that you have to give up all this nonsense on the mental platform and bodily platform. You have come to the transcendental platform. And what is that transcendental platform? To understand your relationship with Krishna. That is Krishna.
This is confirmed by all the great teachers, including Shankara and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In India, there are many authorities on Vedic knowledge, and they have virtually all accepted Sri Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We should therefore accept the Bhagavad Gita as it is directed by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And here is an important fact. Uh, the other day while I, I was walking, I saw one advertisement of tourist uh, agent. Uh, India's picture is given. The wonderful land. The wonderful land. Anyway, so I asked uh, Kartikya, so India is considered very wonderful? He said yes. Anyway, India is still considered uh, the land of spiritual uh, cultivation. Even one Chinese author, he has written that if you want to study religion, then you have to go to India. Uh, he's impartial. He's not Indian, not an American, uh, any country. He is Chinese. Chinese are considered to be communist country, but he is very impartial. He said that if you have to learn what is religion, then you have to go to India. Mm-hmm. Anyway, India, actually it is the land of religion. Dharmakshetra. Uh, although it has gone down at the present moment. But anyway, uh, there are two sections uh, in the, uh, amongst the Indian uh, bona fide religionists. That means bona fide religious means those who are following the Vedic principles. They are called bona fide. Uh, and that, is, that was the system. It's, in the uh, bygone ages, even uh, uh, one thousand years ago, uh, now that, that's like Buddha, Buddha religion. Buddha religion is also Indian religion. Lord Buddha, he was Indian. He, uh, just like Lord Chaitanya, began his propaganda from Bengal. Lord Buddha made his propaganda from Bihar. He was Indian. But the defect was that he did not acknowledge the authority of the Vedas. Therefore, his philosophy was concerned atheism. And the Sankaracharya uh, drove away all the Buddhists from the land of India. Therefore, they took shelter in China, Japan, Burma, outside India. So anyway, uh, a strict religionists, they are followers of Vedas and they are divided into two groups. One group led by Shankaracharya and the other group is led by the Vaishnava or uh, generally Ramanucharya, Madhyacharya or Lord Chaitanya. They are all the same, Vaishnava. Now, all these two groups, following the Vedic principle, they accept Krishna as the Supreme Personality of God. So far, India's authoritative persons are concerned. There is no two opinions that Krishna is not God. Both of them accept Krishna as the Supreme Personality. So far, we are concerned, Vaishnavas, we accept there is no doubt about it. There are four uh, different uh, parties of Vaishnavas. All of them accept Krishna, the Supreme Personality. There are eight commentaries on the very authoritative, very large commentaries on the Srimad Bhagavata of these Vaishnavas, and all of them accept Krishna. So far, the other party is concerned, the impersonalist, led by Sankaracharya, a great stalwart scholar, he also accepts Krishna as the Supreme Personality. He says, Sabhagavan Sang Krishna. The concept of personality of Godhead, here is Krishna. 
and people may misunderstand. Therefore, he has specifically mentioned Krishna, who has appeared as the son of Devaki and Vasudev. Particularly, just like when you have to put your identification, you have to give the, your father's name or your husband's name. Similarly, the same principle as Sankara just followed. He has said, Krishna, the Krishna who is who has appeared as the son of Devaki and Vasudev. So there is no uh, two opinions. So well, this Krishna, maybe another Krishna. No. So that is stated here. Yes. Krishna is accepted as the supreme person of Godhead by all the followers of Vedas. That is a fact. Yes. Now in the fourth chapter, Lord tells Arjuna that this yoga system of the Bhagavad Gita was first spoken to the sun god. The Blessed Lord said, I instructed this imperishable, sci- imperishable science of yoga to the sun god Vivaswan, and Vivaswan instructed it to Manu, the father of mankind. And Manu in turn instructed it to Ikshaku, this supreme science was thus received through the chain of scientific succession, and the saintly kings understood it in that way. But in the course of time, succession was broken, and therefore the science as it is appears to be lost. That is the instruction in the Bhagavad Gita, that this science of Bhagavad Gita has to be accepted by disciplic succession. That is uh, the way of accepting any scientific thing. Uh, Just like even in material science. Suppose if you have to become a medical practitioner or a lawyer, so you have to study the law books by the previous lawyers, by the judgment of the courts. Uh, One who has studied the previous records of uh, legal implications. He is best lawyer. Similarly, uh, a medical practitioner, practitioner who has studied the previous books and knowledge and uh, experience, he is called experienced physician. The same principle is there, that the spiritual knowledge, you cannot manufacture any spiritual knowledge. Uh, that is atheism. Uh, you cannot manufacture any religious principle. It is not possible. That is not accepted in Veda. Dharman to Sakshat Bhagavat Prani. Dharma means the rules and regulation which is given by God. That is accepted everywhere in Bible, in Quran also. The laws of God. You cannot manufacture. So Krishna said, that this principle of Bhagavad Gita, at the present moment Bhagavad Gita is being interpreted by anyone and everyone according to his whims. That is not permissible. That is not Bhagavad Gita. We have to understand this. Simply Bhagavad Gita is that which is received by the parampara system. That is being expressed. Arjuna was neither a great scholar nor a Vedantist, but a great soldier. A soldier is not supposed to be scholarly, and so Arjuna was selected to understand the Bhagavad Gita because of one qualification only. He was a devotee of the Lord. This <laughs> indicates that the Bhagavad Gita is especially meant for the devotee of the Lord. So this point is this guy, that uh, just like this... Uh, Yogi, Maha, Maharishi, he has also written one Bhagavad Gita. Now what right he has got? He has no right to uh, say anything about Bhagavad Gita because he is not a devotee. Bhagavad Gita is taught to Arjuna. He was neither a yogi nor a scholar nor a Vedantist. Not a Brahmin even. He was Kshatriya. 
not a sannyasi even. He was Griyastha. He had three wives and so many children. And he was fighting for kingdom. What is the qualification that mm-hmm. Bhagavad Gita was taught to him? Because he was devotee. People have to see how Bhagavad Gita is to be accepted. Especially Krishna mentions in the fourth chapter. So I am speaking to you. The disciplic succession is now broken. Therefore, I am speaking to you the old system of yoga, Bhagavad Gita again. And to you. Why and to me, Krishna? Because you are my devotee. That was the answer. The only qualification to understand Bhagavad Gita is to become a devotee of Krishna, otherwise it is not possible. Just give this challenge to everyone. What do you understand about Bhagavad Gita? You don't you are not devotee of Krishna. How you can understand Bhagavad Gita so that you are speaking of Bhagavad Gita and cheating people? So uh, bring all the books which is which are published in your country and find out a single man who is a Krishna's devotee. Nobody of them. Then what authority he has got to write on Bhagavad Gita? He has no right. Huh? It is simply poking your nose in others' business. Nonsense. Just challenge this person. So what right you have got? He has no right. Huh? They, 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 the rascals, they said everyone is God. And uh, how they can be devotee? Does a devotee say that everyone is God? They say God is one. Huh? So you are realizing by meditation, I am God, you are God, my brother is God, my, my father is God, my this is God, everyone is God. This is the Going on. You want to stop all this raskarla. That is our challenge. We may not have many followers. We don't care for them. We don't want these nonsense followers, many thousands. But they'll do. But if we can turn one man into Krishna consciousness perfectly, he can do tremendous work in the world. That is our principle. We don't want nonsense. But this is the principle of understanding Bhagavad Gita. There are three kinds of transcendentalists. The yogi, the impersonalist, and the bhakta, or the bodhi. Krishna says to Arjuna, I am making you the first man of disciplic succession. The old succession is broken. I wish to reestablish the line of teaching which was passed down from the sun god. So you become the authority of the Bhagavad Gita. The Bhagavad Gita is directed to the devotee of the Lord who is directly in touch with the Lord as a friend. To learn the Bhagavad Gita, one should be like Arjuna, a devotee having a direct relationship with the Lord. This is more helpful than yoga or impersonal philosophical speculation. A devotee can be in relationship with the Lord in five different ways. He may have a passive have a passive relationship. Now here is explained who is a devotee. That is explained. <clears throat> here. He may have a passive relationship. He may have an active relationship. Three, he may be in friendship. Four, he may have the relationship of a parent. And five, he may have the relationship of a conjugal lover of the Lord. Arjuna was a devotee in relationship the with the passive relationship is uh, simply uh, uh, realizing, oh, how God is great. God is great. One is uh, thunderstruck with the greatness of God. That is possible. God, God is great. When that relationship is enhanced a little more, 
the next stage is that if God is great, why not give him some service? Just like we are accustomed to give some service uh, to some person who is greater than me. That is the uh, laws of nature. Just like the animals. The animals are giving service to the man. Because the man is supposed to be greater than the animal. Uh, Similarly, one man is greater than the other. So the smaller man is giving service to the greater man. Uh, That is the law of nature. So when this sense comes, if God is so great, not that God is great, therefore exact from God the uh, things of my sense gratification. No. The real love is that God is great. God is supplying us so many things, all our necessities. Why not render some service to God? This consciousness is part of that development. Uh, The next development is to give service to God as friend, just like Arjun is giving. And the next development is to render service to God as parents. And the highest platform of service rendering to God is conjugal love. So there are different stages. That is just one. Go on. Arjuna, when the devotee in relationship with the Lord is a friend, this friendship is different from friendship in the mundane world. This kind of friendship is transcendental. Everyone has some relationship with the Lord. Unfortunately, in our possession, in our present status, we have forgotten that that eternal tie. Yet each of the millions upon millions of living beings has its particular relationship. By the process of service, one can revive one's original status with the Lord. Now, this relationship is already established. Because I am eternal, God is eternal. Therefore, my relationship with God is also eternal. That relationship is there. Now, due to my covering of this uh, material body or influence of material energy, I have forgotten. This is my position. In the conditioned state, in this material condition of life, our position is that I, we have forgotten our relationship with God. But therefore we are trying to establish so many relationships with this material world. I am trying to uh, find some relationship with particular type of society, particular type of community, particular type of nation, particular type of family or individual, so many ways. I am searching what is my relationship because I have lost my relationship with God. Therefore, I have to reestablish, I have to revive my old relationship with Krishna. That is Krishna's concern. This Krishna consciousness process is to, uh, just like in darkness, you are finding your things, your watch. You cannot uh, find it out. Sometimes you're touching this, sometimes touching this, sometimes touching this, but the real thing you are not touching. Uh, so you are builder, you are heret. And now if you touch Krishna consciousness, this harassment will be stopped. It is so nice thing. We are giving you your lost relationship, which you are searching out life after life. And you are confused. Take this. He will be happy. He will find your relationship, eternal relationship with Krishna. Now Arjuna was a devotee, and he was in touch with the Supreme Lord in friendship. Thus, the Bhagavad Gita was explained to him how we accepted 
should be noted. This is meant, mentioned in the 10th chapter. After hearing the Bhagavad Gita from the Lord, Arjuna accepted Krishna as the Supreme Brahman. Every living being is Brahman or spirit, but the Supreme Living Being is the Supreme Brahman. Now, here is another point that everyone is reading Bhagavad Gita. The, it is clearly stated how Bhagavad Gita should be accepted. Bhagavad Gita was spoken to Arjuna, and Arjuna accepted it in his own understanding, whatever he understood. That is also stated. Therefore, we have to place ourselves in the position of Arjuna and accept the truth as Arjuna directly received it. That is understanding of Bhagavad Gita. That is stated in the tenth chapter, how Arjuna accepted Bhagavad Gita and Krishna. That is explained here. Arjuna accepted Krishna as pure, free from all material contamination, as the supreme enjoyer, as the foremost person, the supreme personality of Godhead, never born the greatest. Now one may say that one may say that since Krishna and Arjuna were friends, Arjuna was only saying these things to his friend. But Arjuna that Krishna is accepted as the supreme personality of Godhead, not only by himself, but by Narada, Vyata, and numerous other great persons. Authorities. He accepted Krishna as the supreme personality of Godhead, not because Krishna happened to be his intimate friend, but on the authority of other, and on the statement of Krishna, uh, and by understanding him fully, he, he did not accept him blindly. Uh, so this is the process of understanding Bhagavad Gita. And although he understood fully, because in future so many rascals will come and proclaim himself that I am also incarnation of God, therefore. In the eleventh chapter, Arjun requested Krishna, say, if you think, you can show me your universal form, so that in future others will accept some bogus rascal as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He may test by seeing the, uh, I mean, the, the universal form of the person. So who can exhibit this universal form except Krishna? So we have explained this Bhagavad Gita in the parampara system, as we have heard from authoritative sources. So it may be a new contribution uh, to your country, because in every edition they have concocted uh, some ideas about Bhagavad Gita, but we are presenting Bhagavad Gita as it is. So any question? You commented that Swami Prabhupada that everyone has a natural desire to have a relationship with Krishna, but that because not desire, but he is already established. That is covered. Just like uh, your relationship with somebody as father and son, it is established. He might have forgotten. You might have left your home since a very, very long time, and you do not know who is your father. But there is some father. That is a fact. Nobody can say, no, I, I, have, I am born without father. Nobody can say. One has father. But it may be that he has forgotten his father. So this Krishna consciousness movement is, that we have got some relationship with the Supreme Lord. That we have now forgotten. So it is not the question of desire. It is there. You don't this desire to become one son. You are already one son. It simply do not know. Similarly, your relationship with Krishna is there. Every one of us. But I have forgotten. I do not know. This Krishna consciousness practice will revive your relationship. 
in what way, in which way you are related with Krishna. It is not that you have to desire, no. It is already there. If you have to desire, only have to revive it, that's all. That is Krishna cause. It is not an artificial thing. Just like oh, we are establishing some relationship with somebody, or oh, you are my father, or you are my uh, wife, or you are my husband. No. It is already there. Simply we have to uh, find out. That will be uh, revealed when you are perfect in Krishna consciousness. Brahma Bhuta Prasannatmana Sujati, you are freed from all material contamination and you are perfectly situated in devotional service, it will be at once revealed. Oh, you are related to Krishna. You will have to wait for that. Who was Jesus' father? Hmm? Who was Jesus' father? God. You do not know that? Oh, huh? he said that I am son of God. How is that? You are asking for of Jesus, you do not know this? He said himself that I am son of God. You do not know this? Oh, I didn't know you think that. I didn't know you had. I think I was a Christian. What is that? He said. Are we all Christians? Yes. I think you had Lord Jesus Christ had a relationship with Joseph. Joseph was uh, married to his mother, Mary. So he's thinking, what is it? What is Jesus' relationship with Joseph? Jesus is son of what? And Joseph raised them up as a little boy. Yeah, just like uh, every spirit soul is son of God, but materially uh, we think uh, some somebody has father, but real father is God. That is stated in the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, this mahatattva, this material world, just like a child, his child is born, the father gives the seed and mother develops the body. The child's body is developed, actually all all of us, we have got this body from mother. That we have got very natural affinity with mother. The child can forget his father, but he cannot forget his mother. Mother's relationship is so intimate. Similarly, this material body we have got from the material energy. Therefore, we are so much materialist. We are thinking of this country, that community, this family, all materialistic, because this body is material. But so far, spirit soul, I am concerned, I am the son or the part and parcel of this. The material nature is the mother. And God is the Father. And we are exhibited in so many forms. Eight million four hundred thousands of forms. So one who has understood this truth, the God is Father, he no more looks, ah, oh, this is cat, this is dog, this is cow, this is black, this is white, this is Chinese, this is American. No. That is the universal brother who oh, we are my friend. Brahma Bhuta Prasanna Atma. No more enmity. They are all my brother. Sama Sarve Subhutes. With everyone, it is on the equal level. For oh, their spiritual part, part and parcel of my father. This vision 
Max one advance in Krishna consciousness. This is fact. This is realization. This is universal, brother. Everything. This is this Krishna call. Uh, what is the proper relationship of the devotee to Radha? Radharani is Devi Maya. Just like we are in our material conditional life, we are under the material energy. Similarly, in our liberated state, we have to become under the uh, spiritual energy. And that spiritual energy is Radha. We are acting at the present moment under material energy. Uh, because our body is made of material energy. So when you are liberated, you will develop your body of spiritual energy. That spiritual energy is Radha. So you have to become under some, under the control of some energy. You are also energy. You are marginal energy. Marginal energy means you may be under the control of the spiritual energy or you may be under the control of material energy, a marginal position. But when you are under the control of the material energy, uh, that is your uh, precarious condition, struggle for existence. And when you are under spiritual energy, that is your life of freedom. Radharani is spiritual energy. And Durga or Kali is material energy. So those who are materialists, they worship Durga, Kali, the material, different forms of material energy. And so in both the cases, there is a word in Sanskrit, it is called Shakta. Shakta. Shakta, the word comes from Shakti. Shakti means energy. So, uh, there is a division that those who are worship or the Supreme as Mother, just like the worshiper of Goddess Kali. And that means those who are accepting the Absolute as Mother. They are called Shakta. Uh, the Shakta, the Vaishnav, they are also Shakta because they are also accepting uh, uh, another, this uh, pure energy, personal energy or internal energy of Krishna. That is also Shakti. And the materialist also, they are also accepting another energy. The one energy, the spiritual energy, is uh, in our normal condition, and material energy in, is our abnormal condition. The Krishna consciousness practice means you have to transfer yourself from this material energy to this under the control, from the control of material energy under the control of spiritual energy. That's all. That spiritual energy is Radha. You have to become under the control. I'll give you one concrete example. Just like a person is always under the control of government, a citizen. When he is uh, outlaw, 
he is under the criminal law. And who is law abiding, he is under civil law. He cannot say that I cannot remain within the law of the government. He has to. That is his position. Artificially he may deny, but he will be forced. Similarly, our position is part and parcel of the Supreme Law. And as part and parcel, we have to render service. If we voluntarily render service out of love, that is spiritual energy. And we are forced to render service under pressure, that is material. And the material energy, we are forced. Who wants to become, uh, suppose you are American, if somebody says, uh, would you like to become a dog? Next slide. Would you like? Anybody would like? What do you think? <laughs> but according to his work, he will be forced to accept. There is no saying, no, no, I don't like this sort of life. No, he will be forced. That is material energy. Forced. That's the criminal law. Uh, oh, you have to go to the prison. Uh, I don't want. Oh, you will be forced. Why oh, don't want? You'll be arrested. Immediate. There is sufficient power. There is police, there is military, there is so many things. You cannot say no. So, this is uh, intelligence that I have to serve. Now in my material condition I am serving so many things, especially my senses. So neither my senses are satisfied nor I am satisfied. So this intelligence is not coming to us. They are going on, charbita charvanana, chewing the chute. The sense and same sense gratification in different way. Uh, in theater, in stage, in at home, at club, everywhere. Simply changing the platform and trying to be happy. And how you can be happy? They already it is tested. Does it mean that uh, sense satisfaction in your apartment and sense satisfaction in the club is different? It is simple imagination. Let me go to the club, let me go to the stage, let me go to this uh, uh, Florida beach, and let me go there, let me see the naked dance, let me see that, let me... That. That's all. But the platform is that, sense gratification. But he is not intelligent that I have satisfied my senses in so many different ways. I have served my senses in so many different ways. Neither I am satisfied, neither my senses are satisfied. Therefore the intelligent man says, I am no more going to satisfy my senses, I will satisfy Krishna. That is Krishna. Then he gets full satisfaction. This is voluntary, this is called surrender, that I tried to satisfy my the whims of my senses so many lives. I have become frustrated, confused. Let me try this life to satisfy the senses of Krishna. Yes. At least let me give a trial one life and let me see the result. So our Krishna Consciousness Movement means that we are requesting everyone that give a trial uh, this life at least. You have satisfied your senses in so many forms of life. Uh, the dogs also satisfy their senses, the cat also satisfies senses, tiger, and these uh, civilized, uncivilized. 
this, that, everyone. Now, you don't to try to satisfy your senses, you try to satisfy Krishna. That's it. And Krishna being full, uh, complete, if Krishna is satisfied, your senses will be satisfied automatically. Therefore, his name is Govinda. Govinda Madhipurisam Tamangayam. Govinda means who satisfies the senses. You don't think that your senses will remain unsatisfied. It will be completely satisfied. That is the secret of Krishna consciousness. So, have some kids.